All right, in this problem, we're going to calculate the angle of twist uh, at end A on this uh, uniform solid circular shaft, with, which has some concentrated moments at A, B, and C, and it's fixed at D here. Okay, and uh, um, the diameter of the shaft, again, it's uniform, it's solid, uh, the diameter is one inch. I've got a shear modulus here uh, of 11,000 KSI. I've used a bunch of double arrows here to indicate the direction of the torque or these concentrated torques here. And I've used the right hand rule. So this is just an indication of what I've done here. Is that if you have a double arrow here, point your thumb, your right thumb in that direction, and your fingers are going to indicate the the direction of that of that torque. Okay, so that's that's where it's gonna that's the just the notation I've used here, just in case you haven't seen that before. And here what we want to find again is the angle of twist of A with respect to D. All right, and here this is a symbol we're going to use a phi for the angle of twist, and then here this is to indicate that A with respect to D here. And the, really the equation that we're going to use is this angle of tw twist equation. You might have seen it as phi equals, you know, like T of X. This is probably how it was derived to you over J of X times G. And this is when you have maybe a non-circular or a, a shaft that's non-uniform, it's varying, as well as the torque is varying. And so you have to have this as a function of x from some distance to another, and that'll give you this angle of twist. And you, you can go through the derivation in any textbook or whatever class you're taking with mechanics here. But I want to talk about how to apply this equation here. And this equation only works when you have segments with a constant torque and constant cross-section. And that usually only works when you have segments that have uh, concentrated torques applied to it. So the first thing that we want to do here is calculate some section properties, all right? Calculate section properties that we're going to use, and really here we've got the material properties already, and the only one that's of any value here is J, this polar moment of inertia, and that is for a solid circular shaft, pi over 2 times C to the fourth, and this is the outer radius to the fourth, or the furthest radius uh, for the solid circular shaft. So this is pi over 2 times 1 half inch to the fourth, and here these this will be just pi over 32 inch to the fourth all right and this is constant through the whole shaft so this is this is pretty good next what we want to do is calculate let's do this over here where i got some space we want to calculate calculate the internal torques internal torques and in in, in between each concentrated torque we're, we know that each um that basically it's going to be constant in between. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make cuts. So I'm going to make a cut here. And if I, I make this cut here, I want to find the internal torque at AB. So here I have the segment. I've cut it here. I've got this torque here of 600 pound feet. What I do, even though I know what direction it's going to be, I always draw my internal torque here from the cut, TAB. I draw it internally positive, which would be uh, the double arrow facing away from the cut. So this TAB here, if I sum the torques and call this positive, sum torques equal to zero, that tells me TAB minus 600 pound feet equals zero. That tells me TAB equals 600 pound feet. Or let's see if I convert this into kip inch to match those units over here into kip inch. That's going to be 0.6 times 12, 7.2 kip inch. Okay. There, there's that. All right, so that's segment AB. Now I look at segment BC. Segment, so this was AB. This would have been segment AB, okay? And then segment BC here. So I have here, draw a little bit longer. Make that cut through this point right here at BC. And I have some torques. I have one, a concentrated torque here, 600 pound feet. Another one here at 36 inches over here going this way of 400 pound feet and then here again my internal torque i'm going to tbc here internal torque i'm going to sum the torques equal to zero to the right right here so tbc minus 600 plus 400 equals zero and that tells me that tbc equals plus 200 pound feet which is uh, let's see, 0.2 times 12, 2.4 kip inch, kip inch. And the positive just indicates that, again, this is face, this torque is facing away, and 
and it's in that direction. This direction is correct. Okay, just like with forces here. And then now when we go to the last segment, segment BC here, segment, oh, sorry, segment CD, I have here, bam, maybe a little bit longer, make that cut through segment CD, which means I'm making a cut here and looking at the left side of the cut, okay, just to make sure that's clear, looking at the left side of the cut, and I've got some concentrated torques here, I've got the, I've got the 600, okay, if you allow me to forego units on this one, 400, and then a 300 over here, 300, and then I have my internal torque T, C, D here, and I, again, I sum the torques equal to zero, I say, oops, gotta be clear here, double arrow, positive to the right, right here, globally positive to the right, so that makes T, C, D uh, minus 600 plus 400 plus 300 equals zero, and that tells me T, C, D is, minus 100 pound feet and that converted into kip inch is let's see 0.1 times 12 minus 1.2 kip inch okay which means it should be the you know really in actual it's actually going the other way all right so tcd right here but now that we found all the internal torques we can now apply the last part which is this this equation here for the angle of twist, the summation here, so three, uh, let's see, I'll go over here for three, why not, three, uh, apply angle of twist, angle of twist formula, okay, and one thing that we anticipate here is that all the units should cancel out, okay, and that we should be left with no units or essentially radians in this calculation here, okay, so here, I've got this angle of twist formula here, so this phi, is the sum of TL over GJ over all the segments that are of interest to us, okay? Where we have, again, a constant torque and a constant cross-section. So in this case, it'd be TAB, LAB over GJAB plus TBC, LBC over GJBC plus TCD, LCD over GJCD. It's important to note that I didn't include a negative sign here. There's no negative sign here because we're always assuming that this equation follows, po this was derived based on positive internal torque, okay? So you let this negative be corrected when you substitute that into here, okay, later on. So here, now we're going to substitute. We know that these GJs are all the same, so JAB equals JBC equals JCD, so that I can factor that out, 1 over GJ times TAB times LAB. And that is, let's see, 7.2 kip inch, all right, times 36 inches, the length of AB plus TC, which is 2.4 kip inch, times 24 inches. Oh, this line is annoying. Right there, 24 inches plus. A, uh, TCD, which is minus 1.2 kip inch, kip inch times 36 inches right here, and then this GJ. Let me let me put some numbers to that. That GJ one over 11,000 ksi times. Can you even see that? Let me do that again one more time. This is one over 11,000 KSI times pi over, what was it, pi over 32 inches to the fourth. And if you look, this will, these units will be kip inch squared, and these will be kip inch squared. And that tells me, once I run through my calculator, this angle of twist of A with respect to D, of A with respect to D, this right here, when I run through, ends up with 0.253 radians because these units will cancel out. I am left with this here. All right. Hopefully that was helpful. This was a nice little exercise. Enjoy. Like it. And I'll do more. All right. Take it easy. Take it easy.